All right, Shalom, Makim Shalom. Hey, y'all, Bashmael Shai, Brock a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you and my sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Our praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and the bonds of the apostles over there at Great Millstone. I mean, welcome back um, to another current events, prophecy, and madness. And today's date is uh, May the 8th, 2023. The time is flying by. The Lord said he was shortened that time for the elect, and we see the Lord. Uh, making good on his word but the subtitle of this one's going to be the wonderful the wonderful i'm sorry the wonderful works of god the wonderful works of yahweh by shim yahweh shai man we gotta like our god he's amazing and you're gonna see that in this lesson and lord willing may be edifying so let's see what we first have queued up here in the arsenal Was only in we've now committed 113 billion dollars to the ukraine for for reference the entire budget of epa is 12 billion the budget of cdc is 11 billion we have 57 percent of americans we have a crisis here we have a war on the poor 57% of Americans cannot put their hand on $1,000 if they have an emergency. That's sad. One quarter of Americans go to bed hungry. We have 1.5 million veterans who are living below the poverty line. We have 33,000 veterans who are homeless. We have 27 veterans, 23 veterans a day who are killing themselves. The war on the poor is a blood war. Hey, he's not lying. We've now committed on. Listen how the Heavenly Father is breaking down this precious America. He's breaking it down. As this man uh, put it, there's a war on the poor. Because we live in a capitalist society where the poor get poor and the richer get rich. So he said that 50, 57% of the people that live in America uh, can't even muster up $1,000 if they get put in an emergency. He said 1.5 million veterans are, are doing bad. They're going through all type of um, troubles that they don't need to be going through. They sat here and, and gave their life. They put their life at, at risk for this country, and this is how they're being treated. So it's definitely a war on the poor. And of course, you know, you Negro Latino Native Americans, you, you, you know, it's like, it's like a normal thing for you to just be poor in the ghettos and not have nothing, you know, but overall it's the heavenly father just breaking this place down and it's getting broke down so bad that the scriptures talk about that veteran, that your, your vets ain't supposed to be living like that. This is a uh, Sirach 26 and 28. It says there'll be two things that grieve my heart. And the third making me angry. A man of war that suffereth poverty. A man of understanding that is not set by. And one that returneth from righteousness to sin. The Lord prepares such a one for the sword. So the first part of the list. He said this grieves his heart. And the first thing he said was that a man of war that suffereth poverty. 1.5 million veterans are going through hell over here in America. Because this place is greedy with the money. You know, when they was the ones that went to, um, whether it be the Iraq war or, uh, desert storm or Vietnam war, you know, a lot of them guys are still alive and they catching hell. It don't even matter if they got ailments from the war. It's like the insurance company won't, don't want to pay them out. And it's a bunch of craziness going on. And that's why the Lord going to destroy America. That's good. You know, because I'm pretty sure the vets and all these people are crying to the Lord and the Lord going and, and the, the, the heavenly father got something ready for this place. Let's see what we got here next. Like, Let me start that. I'm going to start him over. I'm going to start that one over. Look at these houses. It's going to tie to the 15 minute cities.
Like, are they like one bedrooms? Yeah. Them people are 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 wondering like what the hell are these? Why would you create these? Matter of fact, it says these one bedroom house is going viral for its design. Would you stay here or not? See, they don't understand. These these little houses being built like that, them that's for the 15 minute cities. Those will be for you to uh, uh to quickly have somewhere to stay and then be on the move the next day. However, Esau would want to establish his new world order. You know? So the new world order infrastructure, like how they want to do things is being built right before the people's eyes, but they can't even see what they're looking at. They can't even see what they're looking at. They think that, oh, this is just something cool or this is something new. In 2nd Edges 15 and 17, it says, A man should desire to go into a city and should not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men should be afraid. And that's when we enter into this last judgment. That's what's going to take place. You're going to desire to go into a city and should not be able. And if Esau, if the Heavenly Father was allowed this man to establish his new world order, you best believe you're not going to be getting up and going anywhere willy-nilly as you, as you please. Matter of fact, uh, uh, Kyle Swab said you will own nothing and you will be happy. In other words, so even these little housing, that would be your new housing. You don't own that, though. You'll be quickly be there for however they will run it and you will be on to the next, according to this damn devil's um, new world order. But it said the pride of the city, because of the pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed. A lot of things you people work for now in your current house is going to be destroyed. China cabinets, expensive furniture are going to be destroyed. All right? And it's because all because of wickedness. All because you're ignoring the God of the Bible. Let's go right here to this next thing we have queued here. Came across some footage that was shot in Hawaii. Now, it was recently. It was about four years ago, but it definitely caught our attention the video was shot by a father and a son who had come across a whale that had suffered a brutal attack what is that what, look, at, look at that what is that now the original footage was kind of hard to make out but after studying it and the amateur photos taken from the beach you can clearly see a bite radius in the whale and the bite radius is striking from the vantage point of the kid's camera, uh, the whale looks to be almost bitten in half. It's absolutely insane. Local marine biologists analyzed the whale and determined, as crazy as it sounds, that the tail was bitten off in one bite. Now, this is significant because the biting off of a tail is a specific trait of only a few underwater predators, the mako shark being one of them. But there's only one underwater predator that would be able to bite the tail off of a whale this size like has been done here. Came across some footage. The wonderful works of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Like the guy explained, there's only a few predators that he could think of that could do such a thing. Of biting a blue whale, biting him, biting him in half clean, one bite. And that, that creature that could do that is the Leviathan. Who is Leviathan? Well, read Job, the 41st chapter. The Heavenly Father explains how he created an underwater creature called, named Leviathan. And how he's like, he's, he's massive. He just, just read about him. And I believe that was, that was a, that whale was bitten in half by the Leviathan, man. You know, and these stories are now coming out because, you know, we strongly believe when that last day, the last judgment day, when it kick off, one of the judgment judgments is going to be that Leviathan is going to be running rampant. He will come from the sea like they like like Godzilla. They they base Godzilla after him. and He's going to do damage 
So now we even seeing like there's other videos of Leviathan, like like large sea creatures, and they don't know what it is. And it's kind of like he's showing himself. The Lord's kind of like showing them a little bit, but not all the way. And when that creature pop out, everybody gonna be wondering how the who the like, yeah, that's the creation of the Heavenly Father. This is Second Edges chapter 6, verse 51. It says, Unto Enoch thou gavest one part, which was dried up the third day, that he should dwell in the same part wherein are, wherein are a thousand hills. So Enoch represents men, because men were upright, you know. Now the Heavenly Father gave us the dry land, which on the third day, the dry land was was uh, brought up. We're in our thousand hills. We live in valleys and in deserts where hills are. But it says, on, but unto Leviathan, thou gave us the seventh part, namely the moist. And that's the seas. The Heavenly Father gave Leviathan. Um, he's like the king of the sea. Oh, he's the, he's the number one creature in the sea. Man is the number one creature on earth. But Leviathan was given the seventh part, which is the oceans. You have six parts, continents. You have six continents, not seven. All right. Europe is not its own continent. Europe is a part of Asia. That's one big land mass. So there are only six dry land masses. The six continents, North, um, South America, Africa, Asia, um, Australia and, um, was it, did I, did I name them all? Um, Australia, um, damn, I think I'm missing one. Did I, I'm not sure if I, if I named them all. I, 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 did I say South America? Yeah, I think I named them all. I think I named them all, you know, but basically in the seventh part is the, is the oceans. I hope I'm, I'm explaining that right. I, I'll just go back on it if I have to. The seventh part is the ocean, which is which are, which is the moist, and that's where Leviathan is is at. And it says, "And thou hast kept him to be devoured, of whom thou wilt, and when." So the heavenly Father keeps Leviathan until He wants to let him off the leash. So you best believe the wonderful works. We're gonna see that, man. We're gonna see Leviathan, man. You know, let's play this next thing we have here. And the amateur. Today we are painting our potatoes red. That is right. This is a liquid that looks like water, but it is actually a food safe dye. We also add this dye to the water here, which gets the rest of the potato coated in this beautiful red color. Look at it. We do this because red potatoes sell for more money. If you learn something today, follow along because I want to show you more farming hacks. Today we are painting our potatoes red. Yeah, brothers. Yeah. We're dealing with... A damn devil here. This Edomite, this Supreme Clan white man, you are the devil, man. You own these big corporations that produce these potatoes and all these different type of uh, vegetation, you know. But this is what you're doing with it. You're painting, you're painting it and making people pay for the same product for more money. And you're putting these dyes on it and you say it's food safety, it's, it's safe to eat. Man, who knows if it's safe to, safe to eat? This dude will tell you anything. He'd tell you fluoride is safe to drink. But this is what we're dealing with here, man. This is Ezekiel 4 and 13. It says, And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles where I have driven them. So, you know, this is what we have to deal with being under the goddamn Edomite's hand in rulership. You go to the, you go to the store. You you think about you want a red potato, but really it's just dyed red. That's it, man. And like you said, they do this because red potatoes team uh, uh, um, sense to make more money. So a lot of our food, man, you think it's organic. You think it's this is that, but not nah, really. It's just it just painted or you know what I'm saying it's just labeled as that. You know, but. I just want to show that. Let's play this next thing we have here. Did you know that most aluminum soda cans, like this one right here, have a plasticky... And this is an old video, but hey, if you haven't seen it, you're going to see it for the first time. 
liner that's sprayed on the interior of them during manufacturing soda cans, like this one right here, have a plasticky liner that's sprayed on the interior of them during manufacturing to prevent the soda from attacking the aluminum? Let's see what that looks like. For our experiment, we're going to use a can of full Coca-Cola and to remove the aluminum exterior, some sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide will react with aluminum and dissolve it away into an aqueous solution. We're gonna start by making the sodium hydroxide solution, which is just made by using water and solid pellets of sodium hydroxide. As the sodium hydroxide dissolves, it releases quite a bit of heat. And once all the sodium hydroxide dissolves, we will add our can into the solution. And while that's dissolving, we can rough up the can a little bit, just try and remove some of the paint from the exterior. That just makes it easier for the aluminum to be attacked by the sodium hydroxide. Ready to go into the aluminum bath. To do the experiment, we're just going to open it up because we don't want the pressure to cause that lining to burst because it's only a few microns thick. Spend it over into the bath using a pencil. is causing the carbonation to come out of the soda and you can see bubbles of gas being produced around the perimeter of the aluminum can that's bubbles of hydrogen gas add a little bit more water just to make sure that we get all of that can dissolved about 30 minutes for that reaction to completely dissolve away all of the aluminum that is on the exterior of the can we're about to head into the lab it's been about an hour let's see what the reaction looks like What? Okay, I'm going to pull up the can slowly. Check it out. That is crazy. Top's still reacting a little bit. That is just... Yeah. Like I said, we're going to eat our food devoured amongst the heathen. You not, you know... You're not supposed to be drinking soda anyway. Like, straight up. You know? And I get it, you know, sometimes, hey, sometimes you probably drink, you crack a, a soda because, you know, it's just like you ain't drunk one in, in months. You know, and then you got, you, it came with your meal. You probably drink like, uh, you probably take a couple sips and that's about it. But overall, you ain't, you shouldn't be drinking soda every day, which in my household growing up, it was sodas every day. I didn't even know that sodas was doing this to us. They're packed with sugar. Look at the, the content of the sugar on the back of the soda. It'd be 36, 26 grams. Basically, half the can is, is sugar. You know? But you see what they're doing? It's bad enough they're putting it in an aluminum. Because aluminum in the body is not good at all. This it has zero benefit. So the shards of aluminum that do get in there is bad for you. But then you have a plastic liner in that mug, too. <laughs> you got a plastic liner. That's why they said that uh, the average American consumes uh, a credit card worth of plastic. Like every six or every six months or up to a year, you consume a credit card worth of plastic unknowingly. This place is terrible, man. This is uh, Sirach chapter 37, verse 29. It says, Be not insatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meat. So you don't want to indulge too much on anything. Not just soda, but anything. You know? Me personally, I got into the habit where I substituted it for the sparkling water. Even though sparkling water ain't got the, the, the flavor like a soda got, but when you... When you, if you just want that sizz, that sizzling, you know, you just want that carbonated taste, you switch over to the sparkling water. And if you find the right sparkling water, it will have that that flavor that that's that's good to your taste buds. But nonetheless, stay away from soda. That's it. 
It says, and don't be unsatiable in any dainty thing. It says, for excess of meats bring sickness and surfeiting will turn into collar. When you get too much into anything, it brings sickness to you and it, and, and it leaves you angry. It brings you to collar, which means anger. It says, by surfeiting have many perish, but he that take heed prolongeth his life. So if you want to prolong your life, you will stay away from soda, man. And you see that what they're even doing with it. You know what I mean? So let's uh, let's play the next thing we have here. The sharpest object in the world is actually soft and formless. Water. Let's start this over. When pressurized to over 100. I'm going to start this over. This is the wonderful works of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Check out this. Um, the sharpest, the sharpest tool on planet is water. The sharpest object in the world is actually soft and formless. Water. When pressurized to over 100 gigapascals and forced through a 0.05 millimeter nozzle, water transforms into the world's sharpest blade. This incredible water jet cutter is capable of slicing through fruit, breaking rocks, and even turning iron into a mushy paste. It can effortlessly penetrate multiple layers of bulletproof glass stacked together. Even the hardest material on earth, the diamond, has to admit defeat when faced with this powerful force. The sharpest object in the world is actually yeah that's because it's, it's the lord man when when the heavens and the earth was first being formed it was the the heavenly father separated the waters from the water everything comes out of the waters everything you know so it's like water is the number one thing on this planet if if you want to say it's like the besides the spirit of yabba shemel shai water is is right there that's making everything up you know, water. And it can even it's even the sharpest. It's the sharpest when you when you um like you said, if you put it at a certain speed and you put it through a certain nozzle, it cut through anything. It said it turns metal into mush. It um it said even the diamond, which is the hardest hardest stone there is, it cuts right through the diamond. You see right there, they had like 10 bulletproof glass stacked up and cut right through it like it was nothing. Easy work. You know? So we're going to be using water to cut through. <laughs> we're going to be using water and spiritual power to destroy Esau Edom. You know? We're going to have fun with the elements. This is Sirach 29 and 21. It says, the chief thing of the chief thing for life is water, bread, and clothing, and a house to cover shame. If you notice, it gave a list, but the first thing it said was water. Water is the number one thing you need. So I thought that was cool, man. The, 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 the works of the Lord, man. We're we going to find out a lot more things to this earth than what we know now, man. Check out this next one where they're using sound to do a bunch of manipulations of, of elements. They create. They will levitate. Unbelievable. I've seen electricity go right into the objects and a million pieces just fly apart. In fact, using only 75 watts of energy, enough for a small light bulb, Hutchison made a 60 pound cannonball rise off the table. It would also fuse dissimilar materials, heat metal, but not burn the wood it sat on, shatter metal, as well as change its crystalline structure. This was something to write home about. Beginning of 1980, I experimenting with all the electromagnetics and uh, electrostatic equipments I had at the time, I started to notice some very, very unusual effects, such as a room being filled, filled up very quickly with multicolored lights, steel bars sitting on wood and not causing any fires, metal turning to jelly, things levitating, and jumping off to the ceiling, or simply go up, hover, and then fall back down. Dubbed by some as the poltergeist machine, there is no one machine. Just a lot of old army surplus gear, randomly tuned by John. No one knows how it works. John has apparently figured out the right combination of radio waves and electrical energy to create the effect. If it could be proven, its impact would be huge. You'd have to rewrite most of the science textbooks. To revolutionize the planet. If you can build a zero-point energy reactor about the size of your microwave oven 
put it in the back of your house somewhere. You run your house. You don't need to you run all its electricity needs. You don't need to pull anything off the national grid. Well, if you put that into the third world, you're going to revolutionize the third world. That is as much a threat to some people as it is a benefit. And as far as the Hutchison effect goes, I'm rather disturbed that the U.S. government and aerospace corporations has it through the concerns of it being used for renewable force by the military-industrial complex disturbs me quite a bit. i like to see it used. Yeah. This guy is creating machines that pushes out frequencies that it either could destroy something, it could give you energy. Like he said, that little machine, the size of a microwave, you could put that in your backyard and run your whole house and don't even need all these different wires and all this stuff off of straight frequency hitting your house. You know, which frequency is sound. How you think that? How you think that when you when we when when the Al Bashmal Shai, the Heavenly Father, created the heavens and earth? How did he do it? Did the Heavenly Father get off the throne? No, the Heavenly Father just spoke it, and the angels, starting with Yahweh Shai, created it. All Yahweh Shai, all the, I mean, all the Heavenly Father Yahweh did was speak it, use frequency and sound, the sound of his sound, and the angels and everything were able to create it. Starting with Yahweh Shai. Frequencies are powerful. We're going to go back to understanding this knowledge. And like the dude ended off with, he said, man, I'm scared. This will get into the hands of some evil military uh, personnel. And you best believe they got all of that. You know? And a lot of people are going to receive judgments by frequencies. That's what they got these 5G towers stationed everywhere for. Because the frequencies is going, is going to cause damage to these people. That did, that's been juicified. See? I'm gonna, it made me think about Joshua. Check out when you read the book of Joshua 6. And I'm going to start right at the top here. It was frequency that brought down the walls of Jericho. This is uh, jo Joshua 1, 6 and 1. And this is the wonderful works of the Lord. It says, now Joshua, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now Jericho was straight, straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye should come, and ye should come past the city, all the men of war, and go round about the city once. Then shalt thou do, thou, thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets, horns. And on the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it should come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with great shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall send up every man straightway before him. So the trumpet and the people shouting together, that's frequency, that's sound. The walls of Jericho fell flat. And that was the that was the one of the strongest fortified cities at the at that time. Jericho. You know? It was even said after Jericho fell, um, that Jericho would not be built up in just one man's lifetime, but it would have to take one man in his son's lifetime to rebuild Jericho. And that's exactly how the Lord said it. That 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 because the 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 wall was so great, you know, the fortified city was so great when it destroyed, it took that long to even to even uh, rebuild it back. That's how the Lord decreed it. So it's sound. We're gonna be using sound to destroy Edomites <laughs> to 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 put to punish the nations using frequencies on you. You know. There's frequencies, there's very low frequencies that so, um, they're like so crucial that they, they manipulate the cells. They change your cell on a, on a, like a DNA level frequencies change your cells. See, let's play this next thing here. When a person fasts, when you stop eating, it reveals the body's 
superpower. When food is plentiful, our body stores excess energy in the form of fat under the skin and around the internal organs. When food is scarce, that fat is sent to the liver, where it's turned into an alternative fuel source called a ketone. And it's these ketones which provide the emergency power source, not only for our bodies, but also our brains. Along with an energy boost, it seems ketones also sharpen mental focus. Eat days without food? We think some remarkable biochemical changes take place that have significant longevity benefits. Remember those toxic zombie cells aging my body? Well, they're not the only things getting dealt with. Even inside my healthy cells, there's wear and tear. But scientists think that without food to process, those cells can switch into repair mode. Fixing damage, cleaning up garbage, nipping any problems in the bud. With the zombies in check and the rest of me in tip-top condition, the future looks healthier and also longer. Science is only just beginning to understand the longevity benefits of fasting. In fact, we're just catching up with the cultures and religions that when a person... Yeah. Fasting is our superpower right now. You know, just as they said, when you fast, your body goes switch into a mode to where your, your senses in height and it uh, it heightens. You know, your thinking is clearer. Your energy is being is your energy levels are higher. You know. So when I seen this video, I was like, wow, look at that, man. You be turning, you turn like to your super self when you fast. Matter of fact, this is Matthews 9 and 14. It says, then come to him, the disciples of John saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, can the children of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom should be taken from them, and then shall they fast. So now, since Yahweh Shai had been going for the planet Earth, um, you know, you fast if you have to. And we all, I strongly believe we all could do better with fasting, of course, because you're afflicting your soul. You go without eating for, you know, a 24-hour period, no water, no food, or however long you do it. And that's a dry fast. There are different type of fasts, but I'm talking about a dry fast. No food, no water. For a 24 hour period but you you notice when you do fast that's exactly what happens to you you're, you're you're like you're sharper with everything you're sharper in the spirit a lot of things that was bothering you you overcome them your thoughts a lot of thoughts that was weighing you down fast and get rid of those thoughts you know so you become your super self when you fast you know and like i said your body start repairing all the old junk. So yeah, man, brothers and sisters, get your praying on and get your fasting on. Hey, so through the spirit and power, y'all, by Shemel Shai, it's been another current events, prophecy, and madness. Uh, the wonderful works of the Heavenly Father. Hope you brothers and sisters edified out there. You stay strong. Y'all, by Shemel Shai, Shalom.